the death of Joseph, B.C. 1635. 22 And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he, and his father's house. And Joseph lived an hundred and ten years. 23 And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation, the children also of Mature the son of Manasseh were brought up upon Joseph's knees. 24 And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you, and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. 25 And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. 26 So Joseph died, being an hundred and ten years old, and they embalmed him and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Here is, 1, the prolonging of Joseph's life in Egypt. He lived to be a hundred and ten years old, verse 22. Having honored his father, his days were long in the land which, for the present, God had given him, and it was a great mercy to his relations that God continued him so long, a support and comfort to them. 2, the building up of Joseph's family. He lived to see his great, grandchildren by both his sons verse 23, and probably he saw his two sons solemnly owned as heads of distinct tribes, equal to any of his brethren. It contributes much to the comfort of aged parents if they see their posterity in a flourishing condition, especially if with it they see peace upon Israel. Sham 128. 6. 3. The last will and testament of Joseph published in the presence of his brethren when he saw his death approaching. Those that were properly his brethren perhaps were some of them dead before him, as several of them were older than he, but to those of them who yet survived, and to the sons of those who were gone, who stood up in their father's stead, he said this. 1. He comforted them with the assurance of their return to Canaan in due time, I die, but God will surely visit you, verse 24. To this purport Jacob had spoken to him, chapter 48. 21. Thus must we comfort others with the same comforts with which we ourselves have been comforted of God, and encourage them to rest on those promises which have been our support. Joseph was, under God, both the protector and the benefactor of his brethren, and what would become of them now that he was dying? Why, let this be their comfort, God will surely visit you. Note, God's gracious visits will serve to make up the loss of our best friends. They die, but we may live and live comfortably, if we have the favor and presence of God with us. He bids them be confident, God will bring you out of this land, and therefore, 1, they must not hope to settle there, nor look upon it as their rest forever, they must set their hearts upon the land of promise, and call that their home. 2, they must not fear sinking, and being ruined there. Probably he foresaw the ill usage they would meet with there after his death and therefore gives them this word of encouragement, God will bring you in triumph out of this land at last. Herein he has a night of the promise, chapter 15, 13, 14, and, in God's name, assures them of the performance of it. 2. For a confession of his own faith, and a confirmation of theirs, he charges them to keep him unburied till that day, that glorious day, should come, when they should be settled in the land of promise. Verse 25 He makes them promise him with an oath that they would bury him in Canaan. In Egypt they buried their great men very honorably and with abundance of pomp, but Joseph prefers a significant burial in Canaan, and that deferred to almost two hundred years, before a magnificent one in Egypt. Thus Joseph, by faith in the doctrine of the resurrection and the promise of Canaan, gave commandment concerning his bones. Hebrews 11. 22. He dies in Egypt but lays his bones at stake that God will surely visit Israel, and bring them to Canaan. 4. The death of Joseph, and the reservation of his body for a burial in Canaan, verse 26. He was put in a coffin in Egypt, but not buried till his children had received their inheritance in Canaan, Joshua 24. 32. Note, 1. If the separate soul, at death, do but return to its rest with God, the matter is not great though the deserted body find not at all, or not quickly, its rest in the grave. 2. Yet care ought to be taken of the dead bodies of the saints, in the belief of their resurrection, for there is a covenant with the dust, which shall be remembered, and a commandment is given concerning the bones, 